like to actually start by asking you about rapamycin, which I know that a lot of people have been um, talking about in the longevity space. It seemed like sure. metformin was the big thing, and then rapamycin became the big thing, um, at least in terms of what is popularly referenced on the podcast and things like that. Yeah. Um, which maybe you know, there's there's different strains of the longevity space as well. There's what's popular within kind of consumer information, and then there's what's popular within the you know research worlds, which minimizes yeah, I, necessarily map. I think you nailed it, right? I mean, I think both metformin and rapamycin are still actively studied in the the scientific realm of of a geroscience or or, or longevity science. Um, I would say that, you know, rapamycin for me personally, if I had to pick a single drug or intervention that I'm most um, enthusiastic about the, the potential uh, applications in, in people and in companion dogs, as we'll talk about for a long time, it's been rapamycin. I think, um, you know, it's been clear to me that, that that really is the most effective and reproducible drug for increasing lifespan broadly improving health span in laboratory animals for, for many, many years. Um, I think what we're seeing now is that more people are comfortable talking about rapamycin um, on popular podcasts or, or, or in the media. And that has had sort of a follow on effect of it gaining more, more attention. I think part of it is that we're starting to learn a lot more, you know, for a long time, we've known that in laboratory animals, this drug was really very effective at increasing lifespan and health span. We're starting now to get the first hints that there may be some similar kinds of effects in the real world. And I think that's also contributing to recognition outside of the, the scientific community, that this is something that's interesting and we should pay attention and we should be studying uh, in greater depth for for healthy longevity in dogs and potentially in people as well. Mm. C- could you speak a little bit, Matt, to what has been found in animal studies with rapamycin, um, and then what the mechanism of action is, and you know, thus the reason there may be similar carryover effects for humans. Sure. So, uh, so in terms of what we know about the the effects of rapamycin. Um, In every laboratory organism where it's been tested, rapamycin treatment has been shown to increase lifespan to the extent we can measure health span in these different organismal models to also extend health span. So by health span, what I mean is the period of life that's spent at high function, in good health, free from chronic disease and disability. The extent to which you can really measure health and health span differs in different laboratory animal models that you might study. The important point that that I wanna make though is in all of those systems, rapamycin increases lifespan. And again, to the extent that we can measure, it seems to preserve health later into life. There are two things about rapamycin from mouse studies that I think are most exciting and probably relevant for potential translation. One is, it seems like you don't have to start the treatment until middle age. And in fact, transient treatments just during middle age in mice are enough to give you pretty much the full increase in lifespan and increase in health span. And that's really important when we think about doing this in people or in companion animals. You want an intervention where you can start the treatment during middle age and maybe not have to even take it for the rest of your life. 